Hi guys! Now before going into this video, I really just want to ask you guys a favor, really, and that is consider to subscribe to this channel. As I count my knowledge that 90% of the people watching my content are not subscribed, so make sure to do just that as I release who was really better every Wednesday and how they fix the Runa Pokemon every Friday with every other so league battle throughout the week. And as always, no, give a like to this video if you find it informative and you know fun. <laughs> so Copperage versus Stomfan, the two elephants. Really, like it took them what is that six generation between to make another elephant Pokemon? That's kind of kind of rough. Like Drowsy though, but yeah, what can I say about these Pokemons? Well, it should really go without saying that they are absolutely incredible offensive presence and while there is both a bit on the slow side they do resign to be somewhat of a bulky offensive attacker and they both do it really well and has a really broad move pool for different types of matchup and overall compensates their abilities quite well now we should go without saying that dolphin of course isn't in the game but thanks to the Pokemon Home League and the technical records that could be showcased there, we have a rough idea of what Dolphin potentially can be this generation, if it is released, that is. So with that said, it's always going to go over there, of course, overarching theme with moofles and niches and, uh, well, leave viability to an extent to find out which one of these two that really are better. And we'll start off with the Pokemon introduced first, which is, of course, the Beast, the Monster, the Dauphin. Now, as far as we are aware, Dauphin has not got any stat increases in this generation, but with that said, it is as viable as ever. And Soul Ground type means you have immunity in electric, you resist the likes of poison and rock, and weak to grass, ice, and water. Pretty straightforward, very, very splashable typing as a whole, and it does compensate other types really well. Ground types really like to have a fire defensive type and on its side, as it does relieve it of some pressure. When it comes to its stat distribution, it's very straightforward. It's high HP with 90, attack and defense at 120, which is really high for a tanky Pokemon, even at that, and 60 base in both special attack and special defense would just make it a bit on the frail side, but resilient to, of course, 90 base HP do allow it to be somewhat special, special defensive, and a speed base at 50, which is, all things considered, quite slow. Uh, it does force it to be more invested towards speed if you want to beat some more speedier stall breakers because that, that's something that always can be forced to be fend off against. When it comes to abilities, we have Sand Veil, which is one of those abilities that you probably not want to consider. And then we have Sturdy, which is an automatic sash. It does allow this Pokemon to be a potential anti-lead and get off see its own Stellar Frogs and whatnot. But overall, Sturdy is the most preferable one, but it also doesn't have necessarily the like best abilities out there but being of course in, in a position or as a starting point to actually not be wanted KO'd is absolutely a big perk if anything. When it comes to Dauphin's move pool, there should be said that due to the six generations behind it, it also has filled different roles for different generations and since those sets have primarily been somewhat different from one another, they actually are all of them quite viable in its own right depending on the matchup because of the niches and of course offensive presence that have been forced to fend off before. So with that said, what can we say about Dauphin? Well, when it comes to potential setup move, it actually has Curse and it has a defensive curl which is just kind of kind of nice and also Iron Defense which is alright. But overall, it's not a really high offensive presence, but Curse is actually one of those things that work well with Tharfan. And as a, the reason for that is because of its sole priority in Ice Shard. Having, being somewhat slow and having a really high offensive stat is great to have a combination that does allow it to hit with a priority move. And Ice Shard might very well be the very best of them, as Earthquake or Ground and Ice are one of the best co offensive combinations there is. And leveling between Earthquake and Ice Shard, I can remember only one Pokemon that have that problem, and that would be Mamoswine. And while Darwin is not necessarily comparable to the offensive prowess that is Mamoswine, just having the option to be somewhat similar does allow it to fill a niche that in a league aspect would be invaluable. Uh, when it comes to stab combination, you should always consider Earthquake, but Stomping Tantrum is there, which could be a decent filler. And besides that, talking about fillers, we have a lot of moves that you don't expect a ground out to have. First and foremost, Seed Bomb. Awesome, as it does allow it to function as a semi-anti-response towards the likes of water types, you could potentially wall it. 
It also learns Gangsha, Jarball, Play Rough, which is great offensive utilities. I also, by the way, forgot to mention another set of moves it does get is actually Rock Polish, which is awesome. It also has Knockoff, which does allow it to be somewhat to disrupt your Pokemon, and just overall, Knockoff is a strong move getting off an item. And it's even stronger this generation now that the C moves and Mega Stones are not in the game. Which means you're gonna knock off something, right? Aren't you? Two other niches that actually might have been more viable for it before was Bounce and uh, Head Smash. Head Smash is still somewhat viable, but you know, Stone Edge is, of course, without recall, and that's always something to consider. And Bounce really was great because of, um, well, you really knocked out of Grass type properly with that one, as you know, it's a finished fill. And this generation. As long as I'm aware of, if we could capitalize on bounce and boost this Pokemon speed in the Dynamax meta, that would be kinda cool. I would love that. But besides that, we have two roles this Pokemon has done. One from the generation 6 that's somewhat viable still. And probably the other set is something that had to find Dawnfan, as that role in itself is very, very rare. And that role is actually the, the Stealth Frog Rapid Spinner set. And it's pretty straightforward. It's a Pokemon that can set up Hazard and get rid of them. Um, there are very few Pokemon that can do this. We're talking about the likes of Glidol, Sand Slash, both alone and form the regular one. And there might actually be a few more, but Dolphin is absolutely one of the defining features of that set because it is a good utility. It does allow a few spots to open up in the team as it fills two roles all of a sudden. And um, the Generation 6 set that has been somewhat interesting has been the Assault Vest variant. Due to Sturdy, it can capitalize on, you know, always get hit and get hazard ups, but the Assault Vest variant do actually soak hits somewhat well, and thanks to being able to soak hits offensively really well, it actually becomes a bit more fragile on the defensive side, though 1 at 20 base defense do allow it to be not necessarily that frail, but something it has as a I would say somewhat of a deviant set would be to have counter on that set, as it does allow it not only with Earthquake and Ice Shot or potentially knockoff, counter to kind of force that if Pokemon wanna hit it physically, they might very well suffer for it. And even more so if the matchup is a one a KO potentially, then you know, what if they bring you down to sturdy and you can counter them? And uh, you know, that same kind of set works with another move this Pokemon gets, which is an ever, but since it is on the slow side, it's not necessarily all that more reliable. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much Dolphin. But we have one more thing to cover. Because Dolphin has, as far as we are aware, some technical records that actually make it somewhat interesting. First and foremost, um, it got Encore. It's an initial supportive move, but really, really think about this. An Encore means that any other defensive Pokemon could potentially be abused here. And that would allow not only Dolphin to get potentially the rocks out again, but also just allow it to be much, much more efficient as a whole. Another one is Power Whip. We now hit them even harder. Seed Bomb was a fair filler, but Power Whip is in theory 40% stronger, so it should do roughly around 40% more damage, right? At least in concept, that is. But getting Power Whip means that it now hits the, the things that could potentially counter it even harder. And that's awesome. I mean, what else can I say? Another aspect is Body Press. It means that this defensive set that we rarely have seen, actually later generation, as it's been actually known to be more of a defensive Pokemon, it can now actually go for that defensive set and capitalize on Body Press. It wouldn't surprise me if you see a combination of Earthquake, Ice Shard, Stealth Rocks, and Body Press and just run with it. Um, it has a really high defensive stat to capitalize on it, and I see no reason not to use it. Another thing we would consider Iron Defense, but quite frankly, I think Dom fans potentially new viability is going to be really interesting, as this option also makes it a bit more viable in the league aspect, and that's always something I like to look at, as it does allow Pokemon to be very, very, very efficient as a whole. That said, though, Dolphin is awesome, absolutely, but Copperage might just be as great. Because Copperage is a soul steel type. What does that mean? Well, it means that it's by God one of the best defensive type in there is. Immunity in poison, resistant to bug, dragon, fairy, flying, grass, ice, normal, psychic, rock, and steel. I mean, come on, right? And then we have weaknesses to fighting fire and ground. So, yeah, I mean, the weaknesses are common but consider all the resistances i would say that it's kind of easy to parry these and it's a very very splashable typing due to all of these resistances when it comes to stat attribution 
it's one of those really weird stat distribution because yes, it has a really high HP stat, 122, an attack stat absolutely higher than the offense, 130, but 69 in both defense and special defense are. It, it isn't low, but it is on the frailer side, but it does mean basically that it does have to take really a lot of more hits from each HP to soak hits better. Special attack is 80 is kind of kind of up there. It's absolutely it's a good special attack stat for something that shouldn't hit, especially offensively that is. And the speed stat at 30, yeah. This guy usually go last. <laughs> it's not uncommon. And when it comes to his abilities, we both have heavy metal and sheer force. Heavy metal is good for it because in that aspect, this is actually a bit of a chunky Pokemon. It's actually heavy. But it does have two moves that complements for that, and that is both Heavy Slam, which is a stab move, and um, Heat Crash. And, I mean, that is great. I mean, it's a great filler for a Steel type to have. We've almost like seen Celesteela pulling that off, and that was Pokemon was pretty much the top tier Pokemon of its, its generation. And then we have Shea Force, which basically means that any move that has a secondary effect, um, like for example the Flash Cannon have a, a decreased special defense of 20%, yeah. that will be negated in exchange of a life or boost. It also means the secondary effect on life orb is negated, so this Pokemon could be very, very offensively scary with the right environment and potentially trick room behind it. But as you guys know, a Pokemon is always as viable as its al Moopool allows it to be, so how viable is Cabarage Moopool? Now, Caparage has a few traits that I would say are going hand to hand with what Daf and Orly are doing. Whether it does it better or not is up for debate, but it absolutely gets Stealth Rocks, it gets Power Whip, so it covers that part already, it gets Earthquake, it gets Stone Edge, and it gets, you know, all the Jazz Relief, it gets Curse, and considered the low speed, it actually might be actually a better Curse Pokemon than. And Dolphin ever could be. It also has the viability of having Whirlwind. While Dolphin has Roar, Whirlwind is always like a lower priority, so Whirlwind goes before Roar, so you, you cannot figure, you know, <laughs> if you want to be a facer, you probably want to go with Whirlwind. Um, but yeah, besides that, that's pretty much where it all ends, because yeah, I think it gets a sim hit about superpower and stuff like that, but it's just, you, you will never use them, because Heat Crash is so good to get with Earthquake, and you know, you, you want to use um, <laughs> Heavy Slam. It is a bit unfortunate that this Pokemon that is so slow doesn't get Jar Ball. Another thing I think is a bit of a missed opportunity is it didn't get autumn, um, Automization or the speed move that... Automize, I mean, that boosts your speed by two because I think this Pokemon could have found a way to work around it as it does have a defensive type and to pull that off. Another thing that I think is strange is Body Press. It has more to do with its kind of low defense. You can't pull a defensive set anyway. I don't believe it becomes that threatening with an art defense behind it either. So it just is a part of nitpicks really, but it's something I feel is a missed opportunity for something that could have been really, really, really scary. But that said though, what it does and which move pull it does get complements its move pull quite widely and well. So I would say that Copperage is one of the absolute scariest steel type introduced in this generation, and in the right environment, it is impossible to switch into. And it really helps that this weapon gets self right because that means it can be a really, really offensive threat and still support the team somewhat. And another aspect to kind of use this level with is really the sheer force aspect. It doesn't necessarily have all the moves to complement the sheer force viability. And the other aspect I think is unfortunate is that its special move pool isn't necessarily that diverse as it does have like that special attack at 80 base, which could be really threatening. However, we can only contradict the likes of Earth Power and Flash Cannon special pool to kind of capitalize on that. And of course, should go without saying, really, uh, Sheffield's boosted moves that it has on its physical side are the likes of Rock Slide. Um, Iron Head, which definitely is your main stab, if anything, and Play Rough. So, most if not all the time, um, Heavy Metal is going to be more preferred, even though it does allow Low Kick to just say goodbye to you straight off the bat. But it does allow moves like Heavy Slam and Heat Crash to really do that really, really high damage output. And while Shea 4 is nice, it really isn't that viable option due to most of the moves it does get are always weaker theoretically due to heavy metal allowing it to hurt that much harder. Unfortunately, so Shear Force underutilizes this Pokemon that could be phenomenal both as a special attacker and a physical attack with Shear Force in mind, but it just lacked that small edge, but it still is a viable option, but heavy metal is where you want to go at, and that's why it's one of the scariest Pokemon in this current meta, because 
but really there aren't really that many matchups now, is it? So for me, this matchup is kind of the weird side because we don't have Zonfan. You know, it's theoretical whether or not how viable that Pokemon in theory could be. But it's diverse niches that has already been defined in generations before. It do allow us to at least think that it's gonna fill similar roles now with potentially broader move pools, so it's quite diverse. Coverage, however, you know, if you go pairing like physical viability and even special move, coverage is out there. Like it is absolutely <laughs> stronger than Dom Fan. And in theory, it is actually especially defensively better because of its higher HP and, you know, higher special defense. However, it has a lower defense, which, and it's a, such a significant lower defense that there are arguments be made that Dolphin is defensively better, mainly because of Surdy, because of Rapid Spin and Stealth Frogs to capitalize other moves, and it also means that while Cabrash has a few viable sets, there even are unborn with that is a semi-wall breaker together with Stealth Frogs, or being a Tricker and Sweeper, but those are the defined roles and really aren't deviating so much from that, while Donphan has a lot more to offer a team as a whole. While well, I do expect both Pokemon to be in RU in the future if Donphan gets introduced, mainly because the meta might not actually allow them both to function properly, I do believe Donphan has the edge over having a lot more niches and roles to fill in a team. Maybe not in a small environment, but definitely looking at the lives of something in the draft league, this is where I think it stands out. Mainly because of the combination of Earthquake and Ice Shard do allow it to be offensively scary against no matter what. There are so many few switch-ins. And the knockoff aspect. Like, if a Copper Arch had knockoff, we might have a different dialogue because of the filler moves it kinda, kinda solves. But Dauphin, I think, just is a bit more on the flexible side. And like I said there, you know, having moves to deal with its absolute checks, such as this time Power Whip, and knockoff always gonna be mentioned, is making this Pokemon just in a different ball game, and um, when it comes to splashable and filling roles, Zonfan's viability and flexibility has to be considered better here. While I think Cabarage is phenomenal and one of the best inclusion of a steel type in quite some time, actually, I can't negate Zonfan's flexibility and overall customization that really benefits it all it all so well in um, draft league environment. Kubaraj has a few moves behind to really make that big splash, even though it is threatening, it is def absolutely more manageable than a Dawn fan that could just deviate from its custom sets. So, <laughs> with that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed, of course, this episode, and as always, make sure to say what you guys think about these two, as you know, they are phenomenal in their own rights. And with that said, join us next week for this matchup.